All right, welcome back. As promised, we got another quick hitter with this magnetic monopole or magnetic charge QM. Uh, the statement reads, suppose that we have a magnetic monopole QM that passes through a resistantless loop of wire with self-inductance L. What is the current induced in this loop? All right, Ooh, excuse me. What we know are Maxwell's equations, the magnetic monopole, monopole uh, considerations, or uh, modifications rather, and the induction equations and Faraday's law that we learned in the last sections. Nothing too scary, but we'll use it all. All right, so our solution here, uh, to find a current in a loop, let's start with the modification to Faraday's law and isolate the current densities in flux. We know that they're related, so that's why we want to isolate them. We do this by integrating this over the surface of the loop. So if we have this modification, integrate it with the surface integral. All right, we see here that we can invoke Stokes' law or the curl theorem, whatever you want to call it, to take that surface integral to a line integral. And then we can just split up the integration in the second part where we have the current density uh, times its dA, again, an integral. And then we move that partial of time derivative out to uh, b dot dA. Oh, look at that. We get a flux. All right. So we see here that the line integral of E dot DL is equal to, well, that was the EMF, right? The voltage. So we just have curly E is equal to minus mu naught. We saw earlier that J uh, M and the surface integral was just equal to the um, current, right? So we have current M enclosed and then minus D by DT of phi, the flux. Uh, if we were to plug in what we know about the EMF, uh, we see that we have negative L, uh, di dt, so this brings into account the induction and the current, which is what we're trying to set up the equation for. So we substitute that in, we see that every term has a negative sign in it, so cancel them out, divide over by the L so we can isolate di dt. You see when we do that in the next line, we get di dt isolated, but here we know that the current is equal to uh, the change, that uh, should be dqm over dt uh, plus 1 over i d phi dt. Clearly, if all of this is a function of time, we can take the derivative of the time component out, factor that out, and then take the integrals, which we see in the last step. And we see that this simply says that I is equal to mu naught L uh, delta QM plus 1 over I delta phi. Okay, again, when we give it to the time component, we still have a change in the actual Q, the charge and the flux, so that's where we get the deltas from. Uh, differential equations, again, your friend. Now, let's talk about this uh, a little more, you know, qualitatively. Here, we have delta M as a total magnetic charge passing through the surface, and phi is a change in flux through the surface. If we use a flat surface, then uh, delta QM is equal to little QM, and delta phi is equal to uh, zero. When the monopole is far away, phi is equal to zero. The flux builds up to mu naught QM over 2 just before it passes through the loop, and then it abruptly drops to the negative of that and rises back up to zero as the monopole disappears into the distance. If we use the huge balloon-shaped surface, so if we change the surface, so that QM remains inside, remains inside it on the far away side, then the change in Q goes to zero because we're not changing anything, but flux rises monotonically from zero to mu naught over QM. In either case, we see that the current, when we combine it above, uh, just goes to mu naught QM over L. And I'll have some more words for you in the description because it's actually pretty cool how they uh, did this with superconductivity as well.